everyone and welcome to Make It Happen TV. My name's Spencer Lodge and some of you will know that and some of you will not. But I'm here today to try and teach you as much as I possibly can in the next few minutes about referrals, okay? For me, a very important word, something in the world of sales that so many people forget about, but I believe it's one of the most important things that you can get, obtain and earn so that enabling you then to go ahead and build your business, build your business, build your business. A lot of people in the world of sales don't realize the importance of it. And even if they do, sadly, a lot of the time, can you sort my computer out, Emma? Emma, can you sort my computer out? Emma, can you sort my computer out, please? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys, I need my computer so I can engage with you. Sorry, that's the cameraman there. So what, what I want to try and do today is to kind of get to the point of referrals, why people don't identify with the referrals, why they don't do anything about it, and why they kind of shy away from getting them and, and, and misunderstand the real value of them. If we have the choice between a cold lead and the choice of a referral, when it comes to getting a lead, what would we prefer if we could choose? Okay, what would we prefer? Okay, would we prefer the cold lead? Would we prefer the referral? What would it be? If it would be the referral, which I think it would be, then as far as I'm concerned, thank you very much. Hiya, Nick, how you doing? Bit of technical stuff going on there. Um, if it's gonna be the referral, and we're all gonna say, all salespeople are gonna say, I would rather have a referral, then we have to ask ourselves a question as to why we keep processing and working through the cold lead structure. It doesn't make a whole load of sense to me if I'm really honest. So cold lead, we don't want. Referral we do want, however, are we doing everything we can to go ahead and obtain the referrals that we need so that we can build our business? Let me give you some examples of the, the kind of ratios that you deal with with referrals. Now, when you're dealing with referrals, can I ask a question of you? Maybe you can answer this for me, but uh, do you know what? I've been doing this for a long time, I kind of guess what it is. If we know that we're gonna close and, and choose a lead that's a referral over a cold lead, do we know how successful we are at closing that type of lead? Well, a cold lead versus a referred lead, you're probably four times more likely to close a referral than you are a cold lead. Now, some of you will say, oh, I do really well with cold leads. Great, fair enough. For those of you that say you do, that's fair enough. But if you do really well with cold leads, imagine what you do with warm leads, referrals. So when we think about it, okay, the cold lead, okay, against the referred lead, what are we gonna get, okay? If we were to make, okay, five cold calls, how lucky would we get or how successful would we be at turning five cold calls into a, maybe an appointment, a meeting that you're trying to sell some, somebody to a potential customer or prospect? Five cold calls, maybe make one appointment, if you were to call five referrals, now what do you think would happen? Call five referrals, maybe three, maybe four meetings would come from calling five referrals. So why would we ever, ever choose to go down the cold lead route? Now, why do people not get the referrals that they need to get? Well, the number one reason that salespeople don't get referrals is the number one reason, okay? Earned the referral. If we don't feel that we've earned it, then we feel afraid to ask for it. So it's really important that we position it so that referrals are part of the sales process. You can't just wait for somebody to offer you referrals. You've got to build in the process how you get referrals from every single person you see. Now think about it. You've got a cold lead, you go and see them and you ask for referrals, that's one option. Or you have a referral that you've been to see and then you ask the referral, okay, the person you were referred to, to refer you to somebody else. What do you think is going to be the easiest thing to do? Get the cold lead to refer you to somebody or get the referred lead to refer you to someone? Well, I know what the answer is, and I'm sure you do out there too. We wanna to get the referred lead to refer us, okay? If the referred lead can refer us, we'll feel more confident, okay, feeling, okay, that we can go ahead and ask for that kind of lead. Now, if we don't feel we've earned it, then you've gotta ask yourself a question. Do you feel that what you do and what you offer and what you deliver for your customers adds value? 
if you feel it adds value and you do something that's really valuable for your prospective client, then guess what? You won't have the feeling of not earning it. If you don't feel you're adding value and you're just asking for referrals for the sake of referrals, okay, then there's going to be an issue that happens between you and your prospective client where it might come a little bit uncomfortable, or your existing client might become a little bit uncomfortable and it might make the situation not quite as smooth and as silky as it has been all the way through while you've been looking after that person. So what does that come down to? Maybe belief in the products and the service that you offer. Do you truly believe in what you sell? Do you really believe that the products are really good products? Okay, do you? I'm not sure. If you don't really believe in your products and you're just selling them because it's a way of making money, then my advice would be not to do that. Either fall in love with those products, get those products in your mind as being great products and convince yourself that they really are valuable, or I'd find something else to sell that matters to you that you believe in and you can get behind yourself emotionally. One sec, let's just say hello to everyone. Hiya, Brad. Hi, Warren. How are you guys? Come and say hi. Okay, I can't see everything with my glasses on. Um, Nabin, how are you doing? Rob, how are you doing? So what I want you to get in your mind is to really understand this situation, okay? When it comes to referrals, okay, do we believe in our product and service so we know we're adding value or are we just selling something because we want to make money? If you're selling something because you just want to make money, then my advice would be get out of doing that and get into something you truly believe in. So I come from a world of uh, financial advice and wealth management. That's my background and my history. I truly believed that selling somebody a retirement planning product was going to help secure their financial future. I truly believed that selling somebody life insurance was going to protect them against an eventuality that may happen in the way critical illness, a will, okay? Making sure that their money was invested and working harder than it would work at the bank. All of these types of things I truly believe in now and I've truly believed in since I was 22 years old. I really believe that these things add value to people's lives. And if I can help people stop making financial mess ups along the way and do a service to them and help them get their money working for them and help them financially plan, then I feel I'm adding a lot of value to that potential client and that existing client. If I'm adding value to that client, then guess what? It's my right to be able to ask for referrals if I've earned them, okay? so. Have you earned them or not? Do you believe in what you're doing? That's the one thing you've got to consider, okay? Now, let's say, just imagine, we think that we do ask for referrals, but guess what? We don't get any. We ask for referrals, we've had somebody say to us no, or some other objections you might hear, and guys, you can add, come on, Warren, give me one of the objections you've got. Rob, give me an objection you get from a prospect. What actually happens? Well, what actually happens is, in a situation where there's a meeting between two people, the person with the most certainty generally is the person that influences the other person the most. However, if that prospect says to you, can I think about it before I give you any introductions or any referrals, then it puts you on a back foot. If they say they don't like to give referrals out, they want to speak to the potential referee okay, before they give any details out, then what actually happens is it puts you on the back foot and you think, oh my God, how am I going to chase this? Well, when you're selling something to somebody, whatever that may be, remember that you've got two sales that are taking place. Number one is the product, okay, uh, and the service that you sell, whether it's product or service, sorry, or service, okay, product or service, and the other one is the sale on you, okay, and introductions or referrals. Now, two sales are taking place. One and then another. If you can make a sale on the product or service that you offer and then you can sell, your sell, uh, sell the prospect on you and in introducing you to other people, then you've had a win-win scenario. And that's really what you want to come out of meetings with. However, if we get confused between it, we go down our product and service route, I believe the reason that people don't like to refer um, other people to that potential salesperson is there's an issue. And the issue generally, in my opinion, is based around trust. If people don't trust you, no matter what you think they might have decided along here, if they don't trust you, they're not going to recommend you, they're not going to refer you to others. If they do trust you, then they're very likely to do it. So an objection that comes out based around trust is, let me think about it. That's exactly what happens. Let me think about it. Hold on, I've got some more coming through here. Okay, what else happens? Let me think about it. Oh God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What is it you need to think about, Mr. Prospect? Well, you know, I need to get my head around thinking about who those people might be and come back to you with a, uh, one or two people or three or four people that I can think of.
Well, that person is saying, I'm not entirely sure, I trust you. So let's try and narrow it down for that prospect and get that prospect to a place where they can refer us. Think about it. If I was to say to you, can you think of somebody right now in the whole wide world that you can introduce me to, that I can talk to about my business, typically what happens is the mind goes blank. However, if I've done my job properly, what happens is the mind doesn't go blank, and I'll show you how. Mr. Prospect, whatever that prospect's name is, you told me earlier on that you played golf every weekend, and you have a handicap of 17. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you tell me the last three people, okay, you played golf with? Tell me a little bit more about those three people. And I'm sure that if that guy plays golf and he plays every weekend, he'll be able to remember who those three people are. Now, maybe it's not golf. Maybe it's something to do at work. Who do you know at work, Mr. Prospect, in this office where we're sat right now, in this building, who do you know in your office in the purchasing department, procurement, or in the, I don't know, the, the, the structured finance department or the project management department, whatever it might be, who do you know that you think would be a good prospect for me to talk to that's a little bit like yourself, you know, somebody that's professional, expatriate, that I can talk to about my products and services. What you're doing is you're taking that blank space and you're now creating something in their mind so they can start thinking and channeling who they can think about. And you can narrow it down and narrow it down until you get to the point that that person can think of people that can work for you. So don't ever ask people just for the names of people, uh, introductions to people randomly. Think about your strategy. Now, how will I know that he played golf and he's a 17 handicap? Well, that's because I would have been a good listener earlier on in the meeting. So, getting referrals is key. Now, let's have a look, okay, at what kind of referrals are real referrals and what kind of referrals are fake referrals. If we take a, a chart here and we start to think about it, what is the very best referral okay, that you can possibly get, the very best referral you can possibly get. Come on guys, Brad, Warren, Dave, come on, uh, Nick, give me some answers here, okay. What do you think is the best kind of referral? For me, the best kind of referral is someone who calls me, okay, and wants to buy. That's the best kind of referral. They call me, they say, my friend John, he works with you. Um, I've heard about what you do. I'd really be interested in talking to you about the products and services you offer. I'm in the market for that very same thing. So that is the very best okay, kind of referral you can get. There's the bingo. There's the, there's the one that's going to be a sale every single time. So if we have that as the best, let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum. The worst kind, well, it's just one above the cold call. So what's, what's one above a cold call? Well, that's the name and number of somebody that's been given to you by an existing client, but that existing client refuses for you to, be, uh, to use their name in any way or identify with that person. So you essentially have got here, okay, a name, a number, and when you call that person and introduce yourself, you're going to have to treat that as a cold call to, as far as I'm concerned because you can't introduce yourself and say, my client, Mr. Smith, suggested I gave you a call. You're going to have to talk to that prospect and say, oh, I deal with many clients in your company or whatever it is that you make up to, to, to get that person to, to have an appointment with you. To me, that's not a referral. That's a cold call. So one better than that. Well, one better than that is a name and a number from the prospect but also the prospect says, by all means, go ahead and use my name. Tell him that I said to call. So that's better. We don't know that the person's interested, but the person hasn't been communicated with before. But when we call that person up, we can say, look, I deal with Mr. Smith. I know he works with you. He said that it'd be wise that I give you a call and introduce myself and explain what I do. Please go and grab a coffee with you at some stage. Yeah. So what's the next better one than that? So we've got here. So we've got a name and number and essentially an intro is to this one here. So what's the next one? The next one that's better is getting the name and the number, okay, and using the prospect's name, but then getting them to essentially, oh sorry, get, getting them to make contact, okay, with prospect. So what does that mean? Well, that's Mr. Smith, give your prospect, giving you the name of somebody else for you to contact, and Mr. Smith 
then says, do you know what? I'll give him a call and tell him about you and he'll expect your call. Or I'll ping him an email right now and let him know that I'm working with you and I'm pleased with what you do and I will tell him that, uh, to be prepared for your call. That is a much better type of referral so that when you call that prospect up, Mr. Smith told me I should give you a call. I think he's giving you the heads up on what I do. And that person that says, yeah, 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 absolutely, Spencer, I know what you do. You deal with Mr. Smith, great. Yeah, okay, let's talk. So that's a much better referral. So what have we got next as a better referral than that? Well, all of those things, the name, the number, okay, using the prospect's, uh, your existing client's name, okay, knowing the prospect's name, knowing that they've received some form of communication, a WhatsApp, a text, an email, or a phone call from your prospect, okay, and on top of that, then being one more, okay, then being already interested, okay, in finding out more. So they're already interested in finding out more because they've spoken to the prospect, okay, and they know better. So when you phone them up, you say, hey, this is what I do, this is how I do it, this is who introduced me, um, and that person's like, yeah, I'm really interested in talking to you, uh, I, I know all about it, Mr. Smith told us about it, I'm really interested, can you come and see me? Okay, what's the next best one? Well, the next best one is the person that says, do you know what, I was just thinking about getting myself an XYZ, I'm so glad you called. That prospect is a much better prospect. Then there's the prospect who receives the email or the message from the existing client, and that prospect then here, okay, before you make contact, reaches out to you and says, hey, how you doing? John Smith, my colleague, told me all about you. Um, I'd be interested in learning more about what you do. So they're reaching out to you. And that kind of prospect there is a, a really high quality prospect. And that prospect there is a really high quality prospect. Okay, all come from the best form of referral you can get. Now, a lot of people don't go this far to get referrals. They might go over here and name a number in an intro and think that's a referral. And you know what? It's better than nothing. But you can absolutely get these all day, every day from every single person that you meet, whether that's a prospect, an existing client, no matter what. These types of people are out there. So how do we go about getting these types of referrals? Well, believe it or not, it's very easy. All you have to do is ask. Ask for the right kind of referrals. Now, let's just talk about something else and bring that into the play as well. Third party recommendations. Now, what is a third party recommendation? That's quite simply, let me just have a bit of water. A third party recommendation is when somebody is essentially talking about what you do to others saying that you're really good at what you do. Third party recommendation. If I was going to buy, I don't know, I was going to buy a television. I could go into one of these big, big electrical stores here in Dubai and how do I choose between Samsung um, or LG or Sony or one of the other brands that are there? How do I decide? Because the guy in the shop is going to try and sell me this, this or this because it's in his interest to sell me it. He's not really that bothered about which one I buy, but he wants to try and sell me his wares. How am I going to get the best product for me? Well, maybe I've got a friend and my friend's name's David. And David, okay, says to me, you really want to go and buy that Samsung. That's the bee's knees. That's the best TV on the market. You want to get that. If David says that to me, am I likely to buy the Samsung, the LG or the Sony? Well, I know I'm more likely to buy the Samsung because I've got a third party, someone that's independent of Samsung saying to me, really, really good product. So third party recommendations are really important. So nowadays, how do you get third party recommendations to work for you? Well, the best way they can possibly work for you is by getting video, okay? People that are independent of you, that are prepared to produce a video talking about how good your products and service are, okay, is going to be very powerful when it comes to closing business. So is it possible that from all of your existing clients, you can get those clients to do a one minute, two minute video talking about how good you are at what you do and how pleased they are with what you've delivered. Now, I don't know this for sure, but I know this is possible. I don't know whether you can do it, but I know I can do it. And if I can do it, guess what? You know, the only thing that's going to stop you doing it is what's going on in your head. You know, it's the excuse that you're making. It's that word, isn't it? Okay, what is it? 
fear, false evidence appearing real. Okay, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me. It's not quite like that. I can't do that. Oh, I'm a bit intimidated. I'm this, I'm that. It's just a load of old rubbish, to be honest with you. It's just some rubbish that you're selling yourself there. You need to get, grow up a little bit and get over that bullshit that you sell yourself every day. So get your fear and park your fear. Get focused on asking. If you've got 50 clients, and from those 50 clients, you then... Okay, ask each one of those to produce a video for you, and those 50 clients, only five are prepared to do it. How good would it be to have five video testimonials from your existing clients that your prospective clients can see either before they meet you, after they meet you, or before they do business, or after they do business? Do you think those five video testimonials are gonna be valuable? Hell yeah, they're going to be really valuable. And if five will give you one, uh, sorry, 50 clients will give you five, then you can bet your bottom dollar if you were to build into your sales process, if I do a really good job for you, Mr. Pr Mr. Prospect, if I deliver all the things I'm going to deliver and I help you get whatever it is you're selling to them, would it be possible that you produced a one minute video for me? Don't worry, I'll come and film it in your office. A one minute video for me explaining to my prospective clients what you think about the service that I offer and the product deliverables that I have. You'll be amazed the amount of people that are prepared to do it for you. You really will be. But don't have it makes it harder to sell because if I'm trying to convince someone that well, what I'm doing is the right thing and what I'm doing is going to help them, they've only got me convincing them and they may think I've got an ulterior motive. But if other people are saying, Spencer's really good, he delivers this, he delivers that, his service is amazing, then guess what? They're going to have so much more faith that I can deliver that for them. They're going to have so much more belief because they know other people think the way they want to think, but they don't know yet. Make sense? So let's think long and hard about what we can do about producing video. Can you produce video? Well, guess what? You can. You can produce video on a phone. You don't need anything else, they've got a camera on it. You buy a tripod, buy a phone, stick the, the camera, or stick the phone on the tripod, the tri I mean a little one of those gorilla pod, bendy ones, you know. Stick it on a tripod, put it in front of the prospect, ask the prospect three questions, or ask him just to do something. And you'll find that you get a great result out of it. So it's not a difficult thing to do. So again, don't be giving it, I'm a, I'm a technophobe and all that rubbish. All of you watch videos on Facebook, all of you watch videos on YouTube, you see stuff in your feed on your social media. So guess what? Realize that those videos that you could get from your prospective and your, ex your uh, existing clients could be so incredibly valuable to you because they are third party recommendations. So don't forget, okay, client, Testimonials, third party recommendations, okay, and referrals really are valuable to your business. If you could get, okay, referrals, if you could get 20 referrals per week for your business, based upon your current closing ratios, how many deals do you think you might do on the back of 20 referrals? 20 referrals is four referrals a day. That's two in the morning and two in the afternoon. That's one referral every three hours, four hours, depending on how many hours you work. That's how many it is. We work long hours, we're salespeople, yeah? We put the, put the, the effort in, we uh, pace the streets, we do our job. Two referrals in the morning and two referrals in the afternoon would get you 20 referrals a week. It's that easy. Two in the morning and two in the afternoon. I know. And for those of you out there that are going, well, it's easier said than done, Spence. It isn't easier said than done. It's actually easier done. Because if you do it, you'll get a result out of it. And think about what the benefit would be. If you were to go out to your clients, okay, and you were to get... 20 referrals, let's say you've got 20 clients, you get one referral from each client. Think about what would happen. Think about how those numbers would pan out. So, if we took week one, and in week one, we got 20 referrals, and out of those 20 referrals, let's say, even more cautious than ever, let's say from those 20 referrals, we got 10 meetings with prospects, either Skype, face-to-face, -face, telephone meetings, whatever. We've got 10 meetings with prospects. 10 meetings with prospects. 
And then we decided from those 10 meetings, we were going to make sure we got three referrals from each of those meetings. That would mean in week two, we would have 30 referrals. But let's not even go there. Let's be even more cautious. Let's say 2.5, okay? And we got 25 referrals. Is 25 referrals gonna mean you see more meetings? Yes, it is. Does it mean you're gonna get more referrals? Yes, it does. Does it mean that you're gonna have more opportunity to make more sales and take more clients on and add more value and be more valuable for people? Yes, it does. I have gone from a world myself where we started before the internet existed. We knocked on doors and we made cold calls and that's how the world worked back in the late 80s. And we've gone through this evolution of the internet and social media where people are now trying to use social media to justify or create all of their leads. Well, you know what? That's okay. But imagine if you were to get referrals from everyone that you sat with. You got referred to more people every single time. All that would happen is in week three, four, five, six, and seven, you would end up inundated with referrals, 30, 35, 40, 45. You would have more referrals than you would know what to do with. And if you close, okay, um, cold, you close five in cold calls or five cold leads to one deal, okay, but with referrals, five equaled three, you've got a 300% increase over cold calling just doing that. And I know your ratios might be different and you might say, okay, that's good, that's good advice, but you know what, that's not exactly how it works for me. Get out of your head a little bit and get into thinking about how it applies to business development. We all wanna see warm leads. We all would prefer referrals. We all would prefer brilliant referrals. We would like to get more referrals than we know what to do with because guess what? Every meeting with a referred prospect is going to be a sale. A referred prospect is going to be a sale. A cold prospect, I don't even call it a prospect, I call it a suspect. So think about these types of things. Write down the objections that you get every day when you ask for referrals. Write them down, okay, think about what those objections are. Does that person not trust you? If they don't trust you, then have you added enough value? If you haven't added enough value, then they're not gonna refer you to other people. If you've added loads of value, then you have earned the right to ask for referrals. If you know that referrals are gonna give you a way bigger result than no referrals, then come on, this is easy. It's such a no-brainer strategy you wouldn't believe. It's so incredibly simple, you couldn't believe. But for all of you out there that have the fear of, oh, what if it goes wrong? Okay, this is some of your fears. I'll tell you one of them. Um, I will ask, okay, for referrals only after, okay, the prospect becomes a client. Now, because when he's a client, he's decided to buy. When he's a prospect, I could lose the deal. And I get that. But what's more valuable to you? The prospect, oh, prospect. What's more valuable, the prospect, okay, or referrals? Because to me, the prospect equals one deal. Referrals equal so much more. So what is more valuable? To me, referrals. You give me referrals, I don't mind if I lose a deal here and there because a prospect is being a difficult prospect, okay? But if I get referrals, then that's gonna help keep my business growing, business thriving, create revenue for my business, which is really important. Referrals are gonna make it easier to make appointments, easier to close deals, and I'm gonna get a lot better business from that. So. To me, it's quite simple. Let's just have a look at the screen and see if anybody's got any comments they want to make. Okay, who have we got here? Hi James, how are you? Hi Brad, Alex, how are you? John Paul, Petra, how are you? Kieran, um, if he was the CEO, then a walk around face to face intro to his or her executives under them. Yeah, absolutely, okay, just because you know nothing about them. Yeah, exactly. 
So let's think. If you've got any questions, then please ask a question. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you've got. If you've got a question, please, please ask. I know some of you will be sitting there seething. Some of you will be sitting there blaming. Some of you will sit there projecting. Okay, rather than going, yeah, Spencer's right, you're going to find a reason, an excuse, some form of way of trying to justify to yourself why you don't get them and how it's okay for others or it's okay for him. Okay, that's just a really bad attitude to have. If you don't get referrals, then you've got to ask for them. Okay, it's really important that you do. Now, there are different ways that you can ask for referrals. There are five referral pitches, okay, that you can ask, use your, with your prospect. Now, referral pitch number one. How about asking for someone's help? Mr. Prospect. I could really do with your help. I'm really keen to grow my business. I don't want to work in the cold calling route. Um, and I like to work on a personal recommendation basis. I know that you do not know me very long, but if I do a good job for you today, would you please help me grow my business and introduce me to three or four people that you know that I don't know that maybe I could add some value to too. So ask for help. It's very, very easy to ask for help. Okay, what other referral pitches have you heard and can you think about? Well, let's have a comparison. Okay, what do they get if they have a comparison? So you draw two boxes. Mr. Prospect, you can go straight to the manufacturer and the manufacturer will give you these things. If you come with me, Mr. Prospect, you'll get these same things too. However, on top of it, you will get me. Okay, my support, my advice, my backup, my hand holding, my guidance, and my experience all the way. So you can go direct to a manufacturer or you can come through me. If you come through me, it won't cost you any more. You won't spend any more money. The only thing that you're going to have to do for me, if you want to work with me, okay, is to introduce me to other people that you know that could benefit from this scenario too. Now, I know that you work with a couple of other people in this office. Please can you tell me who you know that would benefit from working with me that's sitting at the end of the corridor in that office or who's that guy over there? Whatever it is that you're doing. So, and that's really powerful. So it's a comparison. Go to the manufacturer, come to me, get me on top of it. Can I have some referrals, please? Okay, really, really important. What other ways are there of getting referrals? If you think about it, depending on the industry you're in will depend upon which referral pitches that you use. But a comparison chart would be good. Asking for help would be good. Another way of working on referrals is by working what we call the 80-20 principle. Let me explain how that works. Hi, guys. Um, so the 80-20 principle, how does that work? Quite simply, Mr. Prospect, in the world of sales, generally this following happens every single time. I'm not prepared to work like this, but I'll tell you what happens. Most people in sales spend 80% of their time looking for new clients. They spend 20% of their time looking after clients. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. The way that I work is I spend 80% of my time looking after my clients, giving them the best service and support that they could possibly imagine. Now, I only spend 20% of my time looking for new clients. Now, you may wonder how I do that, you know, such little time to spend looking for new clients. But because I offer such great value and great service to my clients, they refer me and introduce me to other people that I can do business with. So such a small amount of time is spent prospecting because of the value that I offer. Now, when it comes to running your business, would your salespeople, do you prefer them to spend 80% of their time looking for clients and 20% of the time looking after them? Or would you prefer they spend 80% of their time looking after clients and just 20% of their time looking for new ones? I'm sure you'll agree with me, the 80-20 principle my way works much better for everybody involved. Because I work that way, I'm going to ask you today that if you're happy to work that way with me. And if you are, then I will be asking you to introduce me to three or four people that you know that I don't know so that I can expand my business and develop it moving forward. Does that make sense to you or do you have any questions?
So there are many different forms that you can use. There's a couple of other referral pitches that you can use. I'm going to leave out right now because they're m more centered around financial services and I don't want to be pushed down that path too far with you or go down that path too far with you considering there's so many people selling many different things. So if you were just to use these three approaches then you would get more referrals every single time because you're giving reasonable argument, reasonable logic as to why you would like them to introduce you. Now they could say no, just think about this, they could say no but guess what, where does that leave you? Does it leave you further behind or just in the same place you were before you asked? You tell me. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful. I'm going to do some more educational stuff with you over the course of the oncoming weeks. I've got some really interesting people to interview as well. Okay, um, uh, Joe Bruce is going to be with me again on Monday for a live. So if you want to join us on Monday for a live, he's good. He's a behavioral psychologist. He's a really awesome guy. Okay, and I'm going to have a real good chat with Joe. On Wednesday of next week, I've got Iman Ubu. Now, you may not know who she is, but she is a little superstar. Iman set up a company called Sway Media in New York, and she's built it to be a really successful media company with over 500,000 unique hits every single month going to Sway Media. That's S-W-A-A-Y.com. Okay, look up Iman. She's a, a really super successful entrepreneurial lady, and she'll be bringing her business over here to the Middle East, I think, fairly soon, so expose it over here. But I know she's here next week and I've stolen her to get her to be interviewed by me. On top of that, some other uh, celebrities that we've got. Who have I got? I've got Dwight York's coming, uh, Mikhail Silvestre's coming, Sam Sunderland's coming over the course of the oncoming weeks. So we've got various people out there, other business leaders, entrepreneurs that have become successful. And I'm going to be interviewing some out and out salespeople as well to understand what makes them tick, what motivates them. So look out for that and you'll be able to learn what I'm doing. Okay, obviously I'll be updating you through social media, but I'll be, I'll be interviewing people. And I'd like you to do me a favor and send me questions that you've got email and private message them to me questions you've got for any of those people and I'll be only too glad to help okay that's all from me right now guys I'll just have a quick look on here and see if anybody's got any questions for me um, no I think we're all there so for those of you oh I have hold on a minute Really great stuff, Brad. Da, 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 da. Valuable info, mate. I've joined today's live session. Too little, too late. I'll watch again. No worries, Warren. I'll catch up again with you soon. So, guys, please, 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 can you do me a favor? When you finish watching this, can you share this video with your audience, please? Can you share it on your social media page so other people can get a chance to see it? I'd really appreciate that. If you go to YouTube and like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that as well. It's really important to me that you do so. I hope you're getting some benefit from what I do. And if I can improve what I do in any way, then please let me know. I'll only be too glad to help. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch up again with you soon. And don't forget to do what I tell you to do every single time. And that's to get out there and make it happen.